a very blessed Advent and a very blessed Monday to you, dear saints, as we gather once again in God's Word. Today, the 11th of December, the psalm for us is Psalm 5, and we have the great joy of jumping into the end of 1 John chapter 5. Some very, very difficult stuff to wade through here, but um, not without understanding. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear the psalmist for today from Psalm 5, the first eight verses. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning I hear, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful men. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. This is the word of the Lord. It's clear in the psalm that God does not allow evil in his presence. He will destroy evil men. The boastful shall not stand before you, your eyes. You hate all evil desires. What St. John is going to get to in the epistle reading for today is he's going to make the statement about a sin that leads to death. Now remember, all sins lead to death. But Paul is talking specifically about sins. And these fall back into the psalm. The sins of the boastful. The sins of the evil men who refuse to repent. Hear the word of the Lord. This is uh, the gospel writer St. John writing his epistle. This is 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. But this we know, that we love the children of God when we love God by obeying his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world." Our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is truthful. For there are three that testify the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is the Son, is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write this message to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that he will 
we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I do not say the one should pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God. We, excuse me. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has become and has given us understanding, so that we might know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, a lot to chew on here today, a lot of good things. We won't get through them all, but we just, we pick up a couple of things. It's a, it, we've come back to this analogy, we've used it over and over again. The apple tree produces apples, the orange tree produces oranges, the Christian produces good fruit. The Christian produces the things that God gives us to do. Uh, We use our vocation to do the things that God has given us to do. But also, as we live in this word, in this word of God, in the forgiveness of sins through Jesus, we also want to produce the fruit of doing what God says to do and staying away from the sins that God has said not to do. Anything that's sin, God has said not to do. When we get to the, to the middle of this reading in chapter 5, Paul, excuse me, St. John absolutely nails this, that there are three things that testify about Jesus, and these three things can never be separated. He says water and blood and spirit. Now, of course, water, when we hear water, we instinctively think of baptism, but not our baptism. We are thinking about Christ here, Jesus' baptism. When God the Father spoke, when Jesus came up out of the Jordan, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And then later on, God would again speak at the transfiguration about Jesus. This is my Son whom I love. Listen to him. The Spirit, or excuse me, in the water of Jesus' baptism, God spoke and said, This is my Son. This is God. This is the Savior of the world. And that baptism speaks to us. But that baptism always speaks in the context of baptism and spirit and blood. The baptism of Jesus, this is my beloved son. And it is Jesus' very own blood on the cross that testifies. This is love for you. That Jesus would pour out his blood for you on the cross. This is his mission. This is his ministry. This is the very purpose that God put on human flesh and blood and was born into our world to forgive us through his blood shed on the cross. It should be our blood, but our blood would only only say this is the reality of sin, it brings death. Jesus' blood cleanses, forgives, takes away sins. When we look at this, what Jesus did on the cross, his baptism in the water, in this, his baptism where he was taking the sins of the world upon himself and then his blood on the cross is absolutely where we find salvation. And what testifies to that? But the Spirit of God. Remember, the Holy Spirit is never pointing to himself. Many in Christianity that we would look at in the world of the Pentecostals would say it's all about the Spirit and him speaking directly to you and guiding and directing you, and that's, that's a misunderstanding of God's Word. The Spirit always drives us to Jesus, always drives us to the cross, always drives us to baptism and the shedding of blood of Jesus for you. These three are always together, and they always work together for your good. Baptism of Jesus and his blood shed for you, 
always given to us by faith. Now think about this in the context of our baptism. It is in our baptism where a dead sinner, a sinner in his own sin, comes to the water of baptism and God washes over him with water and his word. And where God's water and word is, God is. So there he sends his spirit to give faith to the infant or the adult. Faith clings to the promises of God. Faith knows that in baptism we were connected to the cross of Christ where the blood of Jesus was shed for us and given to us. Spirit and water and blood all given to us in baptism so that we might believe and know that we are Christ's. A wonderful thing is all of these three come together. And as Paul explains here, he says that, that we no longer sin. Here's the difficulty with that. We are sinners in the flesh and blood. Here we come back to that great Latin phrase, simul ustus et peccator, simultaneously saint and sinner. And as we gather together in this being sinner, we still sin. This body of sin still wants to go back to its old way of life. But yet at the same time we are saints, covered in the righteousness of Christ, forgiven of all of our sins. So when Paul says, or excuse me, when John says we don't sin, he's not meaning we're sinless, but we sin and yet we don't sin because we're holy and righteous in God's eyes. It is it is something that we'll not be able to understand on this earth, kind of like the Holy Trinity, that yet sinners, and because we're holy, we don't sin. Simultaneously, saint and sinner, simul ustis et peccator. Let's pick up a little bit what, what he says here about this sin that leads to death. Uh, doesn't every sin lead to death? Doesn't every sin condemn us in front of God? Yes, it absolutely does. Every sin could lead to death. Now, we're not talking here about mortal and venial sins like our Catholic cousins do. We're talking about sin that damns in front of God. And we all do that and we all have that. But there is a difference between that sin and the sin that leads to death. Think about the Pharisees. Think about Jesus' enemies, the religious leaders of the Jews. They, they would not believe in Jesus and in fact said that Jesus was getting his power to heal from the devil. They denied that Jesus was true God. They denied that his power was for good. They denied him categorically that they are sins that lead to death. A sin that does not find any faith, a sin that is not couched in a person who believes, a sin that denies who Jesus is and will not believe and will not confess or believe that we are, that they are a sinner, that is a sin that leads to death because there's no forgiveness there. For the rest of our sins that we commit, sins of thought, word, and deed, we admit also that those sins will and should damn us. But by faith we cling to Jesus who has cleansed us of that sin and we live in forgiveness. Therefore, those sins do not lead to death because we cling to Jesus, his water and his blood given to us by faith and through the Holy Spirit. Those sins do not lead us to death, but yet to righteousness. The sin that leads to death is an outward denying of Jesus. For those that want to category or classify Jesus in some way other than the Son of God and the Son of Man at the same time, then they are talking about God in a way that the Scripture does not reveal. So if somebody said that Jesus was only God and not man, that's a sin that leads to death because they are not talking about Jesus the way the scripture does. They are not believing in faith the way the scripture describes God. Our Mormon cousins, they would say that Jesus is less than God. He is created by God and that he is not equal with God. Well, there again, that's a sin that leads to death, and that's why there's no salvation in the Mormon church. The sin that leads to death is blasphemy. I don't believe, I won't believe, I won't repent, you're not God, whatever that might be. 
Those are dangerous places because that person is damned to hell unless they change and repent. There's a lot to chew on in chapter 5. I would encourage you to jump back into it and read it again. Uh, that would, we would be long over our time for today. The hope and the promise that we have in this is sins are forgiven through Jesus. That your sin is atoned for by water and blood and the Spirit that connects us to Jesus so that we might know our Savior lives, and because he lives, I will live also. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, we have to jump back again to uh, baptism, just like we did a couple of weeks ago. When we look at, uh, at the sacrament of holy baptism, how can water do such great things, the third part? Certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things. Along with the faith which trusts the word of God in the water, for without God's word the water is plain water and no baptism, but with the word of God. It is a baptism that is a life-giving water rich in grace and a washing of the new birth of the Holy Spirit. As St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for today, and we thank you that by our baptism we are connected to your blood, to your baptism, to your Holy Spirit that continues to point us to the hope and promise that we have in you. Strengthen us in our baptism that we may continue to live in your grace and forgiveness. Hear us as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, enjoy your Monday, dear saints. I look forward to visiting with you again tomorrow. Go in his peace.